Welcome back. Now it's time to meet our next guest, a Latin American chef who is known for her intimate dining experiences and you know what beautiful stories? The chief executive and founder of Girl and the Goose, Gabriela Chamorro. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I'm going to start by asking about something because you have these intimate dining experiences at your house. That's what you're known for, right? Yes, absolutely. How and funny is it to have all these strangers to show up and knock at your house and be like, hey, I'm hosting you tonight. For me, it has been one of the <laughs> most amazing experiences because the people that come to my home, they became my family, they became my community. And it's the people that now support me throughout my journey. But I've also been able to introduce them to my Nicaraguan culinary journey because how many times do you get the chance to eat Nicaraguan food? Never. And now even Central American food because that is my mission, to bring Central America closer to the UAE. On that note, Gabriela, can you describe Nicaraguan food for the uninitiated? How does it differ to sort of broader Central America? When you, have, when you think about Nicaraguan food, it's the perfect marriage between the Spaniards and the indigenous, two big civilizations. But we also say that the greatest gift that we, were, we gave to the world was bean, corn, and squash. You will also have a lot of seafood because we're surrounded by both oceans. However, if you go to Google, and you search for Nicaraguan food, you might get a little bit slightly disappointed because I feel that our food has been stuck in time. And this is what I've been doing. I've been taking those traditional recipes and elevating them and adding a modern and international twist to it. Why don't you tell us about the collaborations that you have formed so far, the support that you receive from your guests and fellow industry peers as well? I think this is one of the, when, when you think about Dubai, First of all, a lot of people in Latin America think that going to United States, that's the American dream. I think that for me, coming to Dubai, that is the Dubai dream. Oh. No, because it is, you know, like, it's the opportunities that I have, I've had, like, being able to follow my passion, you know, a childhood dream, being able to have all these people at my table help me to connect with a community of chefs, of food bloggers, of writers, that helped me connect with amazing people like Omar from Boca, that was one of the biggest collaborations and successful that one that I had. Also with um, Fermont de Palm, that was another one that it was super, super successful over there. And I'll currently I'm also collaborating or working with Splito, which is an aggregator on an app that you can book these type of experiences over there as well. Gabriella, we love how passionate you are, and you said you want to bring that sort of food over to Dubai. So tell me, if there's someone who's never had Nicaraguan food, what is the dish that you want to serve them? Just to give them that idea, that first starting bite. I love your question, because, <laughs> listen, people usually think that ceviche comes from Peru, right? By all means, yes, they have made it very popular. But ceviche belongs to anywhere in the world that has access to the ocean. So. At my table, people would be able to enjoy my take on ceviches. And I love to play with, with different textures, with different temperatures as well. And also, tres leches. Oh, which we, can we take a moment here and we'll look at it? It's on the table and you fed us right before we started. It's probably the best thing I've ever had in my mouth. And it's <laughs> a lot. It was really, okay. really good. So describe the dish for us, please. Yeah. Tres leche is one of those desserts that are highly debatable in Latin America. If you found a Mexican, he will say that it's from Mexico. <laughs> but if you go to Google, the li biggest library, it will say that it's from Nicaragua. And it actually come from the 1900s and it was brought by the British. For these tres leches is actually my take on tres leches because there are two main differences. One is gluten free and the second one is refined, is free from any refined sugars. I also pair it with a nice homemade mango sorbet and yuzu pearl or yuzu caviar. And finally, a little touch of lemon zest and caramelized banana. It's amazing, you can actually taste all those flavors. I, I loved it because it wasn't too sweet. I don't have, I'm very unusually, I don't have a sweet tooth, but I do like to eat the odd dessert. But this was beautiful and the, the, the different textures as well. I think it's really interesting that you, you've tapped into gluten-free, refined sugar free are you getting a lot of demand from guests that have a lot of dietary requirements it's very interesting that you're pointing out that because when we see the reservations through splito they can select you know what are these dislike and what are the things that they have any dietary requirement and more and more 
people are actually requesting to have a diet that is either dairy free, gluten free, or free of any refined sugar. So I do think that that's a market uh, that is uh, very big to tap and that I can also bring together with the Central American flavors. When we talk about expansion, what is your vision for the future? versus everything you've done now so far? You just touched my heart uh, with that question because for me, obviously I, I'm still hosting my tables and still welcoming my guests. Uh, along with our business partners now, we are expanding into catering events, small uh, luxury catering events. And as other people that has been so inspiring in the community, like Niha from Story of Food or Tom Arnell from uh, Hawker Boy, I truly hope that soon Grandi Goose is going to find her permanent home and we're working on that. I mean, the good news is that we're all free this weekend, right? Yeah. So I guess we'll be coming <laughs> over. Home. Absolutely, you'll be my guest. Gabriella, por favor, but everything is claro. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you very Gracias. much for being with us on the show. Gracias. And with that said, the summer is over, but that doesn't mean we can't go on a sneaky weekend staycation. And our roving reporter and friend off the show, Nina Zandi, got to stay at the Luxury Beach Hotel in Dubai. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Nina Zania, and we just arrived to one of my all-time favorite hotels, in Dubai, Mina Al Salam. I am so excited to show you everything that this hotel has to offer. We are very excited to have you with us. Thank you. We have prepared uh, one of the best suites that we have in the hotel, which is Goya Suite. Leonora, look! Did you see? Wow! Leonora, are you ready to go and have some breakfast? Yeah. All right, and you can have sushi for breakfast. Yeah. So we are here in Amal Lounge to have our breakfast. And the good thing is with this lounge that it's open from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And whenever you would like to have your afternoon tea or coffee, you can always come back to Amal Lounge and enjoy it with a stunning view, Burj Al Arab, and you can listen to the sound of the ocean. This is our country. You like it? Yeah, and that's a castle. That's a castle, yes. This little tour, it's so pretty and picturesque. It feels that you're in Europe somewhere. Finally, we made it to the pool. I mean, this is paradise. I can hear the sound of the ocean, the beautiful beach, Burj Al Arab behind me. What a day. It's amazing that Jumeirah Mina Al Salam was the first piece of the puzzle for what's now known as Madinat Jumeirah. And we were pioneers back then, uh, setting a stage for luxury in the UAE, and we're continuing to do it now. The story behind Jumeirah Mina Al Salam is in the name, which means harbour of peace. So when you come into the resort, you leave behind the hustle and bustle of Dubai and Jumeirah Beach Road, which is right outside, and you have this overwhelming experience of tranquility, which is threaded through the design as well. We have the beautiful lagoons around us with the abras, and that's part of the hallmark of who we are and we're celebrating at the moment. And that's very evident in the landscape where we have two kilometers of beachfront and these beautiful gardens that have developed so well after all these years. We had an amazing weekend filled with adventures, relaxations, and everything beyond. My children had the best time, and so did we. Well, that just reminds me that I desperately need a holiday. It looked absolutely amazing, and I definitely need a weekend away. Well, it is time for the roundup. We're going to delve into one of our favorite subjects today. Now, there was a time in Dubai when we were excited about bringing global restaurants here to the UAE. And now, you know what? We're just excited that our homegrown restaurants are going global. So there are a lot of examples. 
What, Samantha, do you want to list one of your favorites? Local homegrown restaurants going global, going international? I think you have Maine. Yeah. That, um, that opened in London to huge success. You have Il Boro here that also opened in London. Ruya is in Riyadh. So I guess it depends what you classify as, as international. Whether sure, it's absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's, that's what's tremendously exciting is that you have Dubai-born concepts that are, that are going global. And what are well. you hoping to see go global? Oh, I pick so many. You know, <laughs> one of my, you asked me about favorite restaurants, yes. which I, I don't necessarily You're like. You're picking a favorite pick child. A favorite child, exactly. Wow. But I am half Greek Cypriot, um, so I do love going to Mythos here for a taste of home, the original one in, in JLT. They've also opened in City Walk. I would love to see that concept go, go global. How about you guys? I think I would pick the Lighthouse. I've seen them from when they, have you guys been there before? Dubai Design District and the Mall of the Emirates. I just saw them in Abu Dhabi, but I know it was like two best friends who, financiers who yes. got together and, and the, it was a gifting, it's like a gifting slash restaurant and it is beautiful and oh, I would love to see them go. Yeah, they've already got a five restaurants here across the UAE. So yes, you would think that the next step is global for them, definitely. Them yes. find out. What about you? Oh, I know what you're going to say. What? Take a walk. You're going to mention the, oh God, I forgot their name as well. The two brothers with uh, Frige. Oh, not only that, there is another one, which is Parker's uh, and it has a nice story. I'd love to, I'd love to bring it up. Have you heard about it, uh, Samantha? Parker's, which which is located in Dubai Mall, they started it with a very nice social media trick. They spread out these keys everywhere, asking people <laughs> to look for them. Whoever finds the key gets to have a table. It started a fuss. People started asking, what is this restaurant? No, there is no key campaign, but you can barely find a table for yourself over there. I'd like to see that. How have I never been there? I clearly have no life. I've never life. even heard of it. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I'm glad I know something what you guys don't yes. know about. What type of food is it, Yusuf? Because I'm interested. Uh, uh, I, mean, how do, I mean, how do I say this? I don't focus a lot on where the cuisine comes from, but one of the best things I love from is something called the pulmi. It's a nice dessert that you just unload, and there's some ice creams and a lot of sweet stuff that go down there. I mean, I can't believe nobody has said Ravi Restaurant, which I think should go global. Oh, you're right, Ravi. I mean, come on, obviously. Well, I'm officially starving now after all that, but we are going to take a little break. So what do we got coming up after the break? Later on in the show, we are chatting with Thomas Oveson of All Things Live about the musical acts coming to the city. And of course, don't miss out our exclusive interview with British Indian trio RDB coming up. We'll be right back. Make sure to stay tuned right here on DXB Today.